Welcome, welcome. Hi, everybody. We're so excited. We got all kinds of fun things to show you tonight. We're going to talk about blouses, and you're going to make a blouse. I know so many of you cannot buy a blouse. To, oops, I forgot to say, today's February 8th. It's Monday, February 8th. So many of you cannot buy a blouse because by the time you get it to fit your bust, the shoulder, yada, 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 yada. We're going to fix all of that. We're going to fix all of it. Promise. So it's just a lot of fun. Um, I have so many great stories on yoga pants. I am so proud of you all. You did it. We did it. So many of you have great fitting pants now. You're making them. You're wearing them. I mean, last month was stellar as far as how many of you made your pants, love your pants, made more than one pair. If you know, and, and a lot of you don't like to post on Facebook, and okay, I get that, but post on Facebook because it really helps others. I'm telling you, I got so many success stories. Marvelous. Really, really exciting because everybody needs a pair of yoga pants and everybody can wear them, you know. You can play last week and you heard me. You can play two weeks ago, you heard me. But um, we're really excited because along with our yoga pants now, what we need is a great blouse. A knit top, they're fine to wear, but sometimes we just don't want to wear that with our yoga pants. So we're going to do great blouses. And we're really, I promise you, we're going to make this, every, every one of you can do this. Promise. All right. So we're going to stay with our format. And um, our first little while is questions and answers. So we will turn that over to you. Do you have an agenda as yet for the March classes in Duluth, Georgia? I want to make sure I'm ready. Oh, we always have an agenda. My agenda is your agenda. Um, I come prepared to, to answer anything you all need help for. So when you're in those, she's talking about the two-day workshops that we do. The two-day workshops are um, helping you, whatever you need to do. If you need to fit, if you need to drape, if you need to sew, whatever you need help in doing, that's my goal to just help you you know I think a lot of us have this little block that's blocking us and we want to get rid of those blocks because they're they're put there by us and they can only be taken away by us but I can help you <laughs> I can help you take away those blocks so if you're in an area where we're having a workshop we just got back from Phoenix we had a wonderful time and Wendy I forgot to tell you that you brought those beautiful fresh lemons to the workshop and I literally went home and Saturday night I made a lemon meringue pie from your fresh lemon oh my gosh this pie is amazing it's so good so thank you we just had a lot of fun in Phoenix how is Brett Brett is eating that lemon meringue pie he's got a new look Brett's sporting a new look it's a typical chemo look although people think he shaved his head but he didn't really shave his head it shaved itself but <laughs> Brett is finishing up his third chemo treatment we went to the doctor today he is doing stellar. Thank you. He is doing stellar. We are watching him very carefully because, you know, the doctor said that a fever to him is like a heart attack. So we're watching very carefully. But he is really doing well, and we are very excited. You showed a pair of jeans on your fit to stitch. They were embroidered. How far up the leg did you open the seam? Up to the knee. Up to the knee. Go up to the knee to open that seam, and it's all that flare is from the knee down. Okay? Can you explain how to fix a stretched out neck on a t-shirt? Can you explain? Sorry, I was laughing. I don't know if I actually heard that. Hey, Jared, on that thing, why is it so low? Go to close that just for one second. Hang on just one minute. That. Okay. All right. How do you fix, fix a stretched out neck on a t-shirt? You look to see if the stre how, how badly it's stretched and how far is affected. You can't unstretch a fabric once it's stretched, it's stretched. I mean, you can try steaming it back into place. But if you cut away what's stretched, you can then put a new binding onto the rest of the neck edge. You could try that. But other than that, time to make a new one. That's the good news, all right? Hi, have you done a webcast for Lafayette's jacket? We have not. That has not been a pattern of the month. Nope. That's okay, we're just scrolling back. Sometimes in the beginning, questions come in so fast. I cut my muslin for 600. Good girl. It was so big, I decided to cut a smaller size. Hope that is the thing to do. 
absolutely that's the thing to do. We had a pattern 600 in a workshop and actually Valerie cut a pattern 600 high girls from Phoenix um, and it was so big and I said you know what I can fix this but do you really want me to because you're the one who's gonna have to make all the changes to the tissue you know I would suggest you make X size and she did which you know it takes more of her time and I feel bad sometimes saying you're better off to do this because is should I do the work or should you do the work but you're the one who's going to have to do all the work and changes. So she made the size that we recommended. We talked about it, yada, yada. She made that size. It was like tweaking. You should be tweaking these patterns, not overhauling. And I'll kind of go through as we talk about fitting tonight, and I'll explain the difference. Because this blouse, hang on to the question just one second. Back in, um, gosh, it dates me, but it was in the 80s. I did, um, I was a pattern maker for a lady out of Houston and her line was called Maryland Designs and she was a very talented designer, very creative, amazing fabrics. She didn't know anything about patterns. So she relied on me very heavily to know what I was doing and to make the pattern for her. We did a blouse. In fact, she relied on me so heavily that she took me to market with her because at market what happens is that's where the stores will come and they love the designer to be there because they can tell the designer what they like, what they don't like, what the customer, all that kind of stuff, they, you know, feedback. But she would listen and she didn't have a clue what they were talking about, so she brought me. She didn't tell anybody I was a pattern maker. We just were both there and she would listen, except I was the one who was gleaning the information of what was wrong as the stores would come in and tell us what their customers would say was wrong. Well, so we fine-tuned and fine-tuned and we changed and all of this stuff to this blouse pattern. This is the blouse pattern. Classic blouse was, was the blouse pattern. So when I went to do patterns and went to do my first blouse pattern, this was a no-brainer. We've sold, we'd sold 10 million of these blouses. So this blouse fits beautifully and, and again, you shouldn't have to do a lot of changes to it. You won't. I have fitted on so many women. You won't have to do a lot of changes to it. Um, and that's why I wanted to really make a pattern of the month. So many women struggle with blouses. I want to get you past all that. Could you explain when putting a dart in the pattern in the armhole, how to redraw the armhole? The side seam is not shortened. Could you explain when putting a dart in the pattern in the armhole The side seam is not short. We're not going to put a dart in the armhole. I'm a little bit... Yeah, just, just rephrase that question and then we'll pick up on it. You, know, you, you shouldn't be putting darts in the armhole. The gap is in the armhole, but you shouldn't be putting a dart to fix it in the armhole. We'll cover that in just a little bit. On Vera's skirt, mine does not have a center front mark. How do I decide where to place it on the fold? If you put... Um, it doesn't have it does have a center front mark but it's on the it's on the other piece so that's because when the when the vertical piece sews in together it it creates the center front so where that put the two pieces together and you should be able to see where it is pretty sure it'd be marked but it's not on the skirt part it's on the facing part and the two go together check that out is it possible to sew a pencil skirt with half a zipper and no other seam. Half a zipper. I'm having trouble figuring out how to cut my pattern. Gosh, I'm sorry, you're going to have to clarify on that one. I, I, with half a zipper and no other seam. A if you're doing a pencil skirt, a pencil skirt is smaller at the hem, larger at the hip. Um, but the waist, as long as the waist opens up, you should be able to get it off and on. However, the, the length of the zipper that you need to get anything off and on depends on how big your hip is and how big your waist is. Basically, the zipper has to open up the waist to where it equals the hip or a little more. So if you have a really skinny waist and really larger hips, your zipper has to be longer. But it can be in any seam, it can be anywhere, as long as it opens the waist up to be equal to the hips, that's all you need. So you only need one seam to get that zipper in, wherever it is. For this pattern, pattern number 600, I'm assuming she's talking about, 
How much ease are we looking for at the bust? Well, that opens up a, a question that I've long, long, long talked about because on the back of this pattern you see that these are garment measurements. So this takes us to where, you know, the Silhouette Patterns is 19 years old this month. We've been around for 19 years. And 20 years ago when I was thinking about starting a pattern company, um, I knew that what, if I started a pattern company, I knew that what I had to offer would be extremely different from what was out there. And so to me, it was almost like paddling upstream, if that makes sense. I knew it would be very different. I knew that the concept of how you all chose a pattern was absolutely false from the get-go. You could not be told to do it that way because I knew it didn't work. You all knew it didn't work, but you kept doing it because you were told to do it that way. You would measure your bust and buy that size, and then you'd never know what was inside the pattern. So. I knew that if I did a pattern, it would have to be different. And I knew that that would be met with a lot of controversy. And here we are 19 years later, and, and honestly, it, there's still a lot of controversy, except for those who have done it and understand this is the only way to do it and the only way to make sure it's correct. So the way that is done is you are to take a blouse that you like, and this is the original blouse that we had on the front of the envelope, and you're going to take it right through a blouse you wear, and I can hear you right now, you saying, I don't have a blouse I wear. Then you will have a blouse that you somehow like, or you will go shopping. You will find something that goes around your bust, even if the rest of it do you don't like. It could be too broad, it can be too big in the neckline, any, I don't care, but it has to go around and you have to be able to move and you have to like the amount of ease that's in the blouse because you're going to measure the blouse. You're going to measure it right through under the armhole, under the armhole. That's the number that you're going to measure and that's the number that you're going to go to the back of the blouse and make. The reason you have to use finished garment measurements is because personality deems what we like in our blouses. Nobody can tell us what we like. I can't tell you what size you are. And I, I get that. I get asked this question over and over and over and over. I can't tell you what size to wear if you give me your bus size. Because, again, I use this example a lot. I have a lady who's 20 and a lady who's 60. The 20 year old has a 40 inch bust. The 60 year old has a 40 inch bust. But the 60 year old doesn't want to wear her blouse the same way the 20 year old wants to. So if they both put in that they have a 40 inch bust, the same answer can't spit back because the 20 year old wants to wear a blouse that measures 39 and the 60 year old wants to get a blouse that measures larger than 40. You, you get the point. Our age, our religion, our personality, our mobility, our work, all of those things dictate how much ease we want in our blouse and there is no right answer. It is our answer and we have to own that answer. So you have to ask yourself and you have to do that amount of work yourself. I'll never forget one day I was talking to a lady on the phone and she wanted me to tell her what size blouse to make and I said, I can't tell you that. You have to decide what size blouse you like. Measure a blouse and she said, I need to make a blouse today. I need to get it made. I need you to tell me what size blouse I like. I said, I can't tell you that. She's really upset with me, but I can't tell you that and I still can't. Once you pick your circumference, then you pick your cup sizing. That we have cup sizing here for every circumference. We have a B cup, C cup, or D cup. Cup sizing does not affect circumference. So you first pick your circumference, then you pick B, C, or D, and you just pick the same bra cup size. If you're bigger than a D, you start with a D and you go from there. Okay? So when it comes to ease, you will have to decide how much ease you want in your blouse. The more ease, the more mobility. The less ease, the less mobility, which is why we like stretch wovens. All right? How do I fix the gap then if not a dart? I will show you. Hold on to that and I will show you. I promise. What was the bottom of that? I didn't see that. Okay. I will show you how to fix the gap, you guys. The gap is not, you know, Often we know that many times when there's a problem, we don't fix the problem right where it is. For instance, in pants, in yoga pants, what we learned is there's bagginess under the rear end, but it comes because there's, there's not a dart at the hip line to fix that. So we don't fix under the rear end, we fix above it so that what's taken out is taken out, it doesn't droop down. And that's 
we're going to do a similar thing with the blouse. But again, I'll show you, and it's a piece of cake. We show us how to make the buttonholes on the blouse look professional. Bad buttonholes are a dead giveaway for homemade. Can we substitute something else for the buttonholes? Tonight, we're not going to talk about buttonholes. In two weeks from now, we're actually, I'm not we, I'm going to actually sew the blouse on the sewing machine. Um, I will cover buttonholes if you want. I think that's all a matter of your machine. But the nice option is if you don't want to do buttonholes or if you feel like they're homemade, I use snaps a lot. I love snaps. They, they look great. I think they look professional. Um, but you can't have snaps on everything, so I think you need to figure out how to make the buttonholes. But that's on your machine. I, I can't really help you. I'll show you how to make them on my machine, but I can't really help you on your machine. But I do agree with you. But on a blouse, the buttonhole itself is really just, I mean, I don't find it to be that hard. A jacket's a different issue, keyhole, buttonhole. Um, I would like to make short sleeves for this blouse. 600 suggestions. Yes, there's a line on the pattern for the sleeve to make it a short sleeve. There's a short sleeve cut line. I'm sorry, I didn't see the rest of it. I was wondering which patterns you consider to be the base for the wardrobe. Um, 195 is the base knit, 600 is the base blouse, that's why we're doing it. For jacket, it's 1900 or 1950, either one. Skirts, it's 2009, Vera's skirt. Pants are 3200, Sally's pant, dress is 4200, sheath dress. Okay, I think that's all, I think that's everything. We're good, we got them all, huh? <sighs> all right. So we had a few questions come in, and I'll answer them in the in the time frame of the blouses as we go into fitting. But the first thing that I want to do is I want y'all to make a muslin. I want y'all to make a muslin. The muslin consists of two pieces, the back and the front. That's it. So you take your front and your back, and you cut it up in a muslin, and you put them on. Now, let me show you what I did to start with on this blouse. And what I did is I made a, a top that I wanted everybody to be able to experience this top. This is the classic blouse. This is the classic blouse. It is two pieces and it's knit. And I moved the center front to the fold and the center back was already on the fold. And voila, I have a knit top. I went down a size because I didn't need the ease that I talked about just a minute ago. I could even have negative ease if I wanted to. I didn't in this top, but I could have. I could have had negative ease. I cut it the same length. I didn't change anything at the bottom. I could have lengthened it. I didn't. I want everyone to try to make a blouse like this. Center front on fold. This fabric, oh, sorry, it's um, ocean blue, it's called. It's an ITY knit. It's, Fabric number is 824. Two pieces. This is easier than your yoga pant. Center front on fold of the blouse. Watch where the center front is marked. Center back on a fold. So you're doing both on a fold. I lowered the neck just a little bit. Take your French curve and just put it on and pick a, you know, doesn't matter. I'll, I'll tell you what this is. This goes from 16 roughly to 22, 22 and a half. So that, I didn't change the back. I only lowered the front just to give it a really nice, pretty little look. And then I went down a size. When I went down a size, it made the armhole smaller, so I didn't have to change the armhole. This will give a lot of you confidence. We're going to start with the two pieces. Start with the two pieces. And then also what I can do, I'm going to take this off now. I'm going to use this to drape my muslin. Right, I'm going to use this as my muslin. Okay, So I can use a knit. Most of the changes that I'm going to need to make in that knit, I can make after the fact. So this will really, these two little pieces are really going to be a huge success for me. How long can it take you to sew together two pieces? I know it can't take long. It, you know, I didn't actually time myself, but it didn't take long. The reason you would make this top in a knit is because I still have my vertical darts, I still have my bust dart and my vertical dart, and in the back I still have my darts in the back. And that's a really pretty look. It's a knit that has shape to it, but it's not a real clingy knit. And a lot of us don't like those clingy knits because they're 
too clingy and they you know but this is going to be shaped and it's going to be very flattering to your body and it's great with the yoga pants okay did you reshape the neckline yes I just showed you that I did what did you do the sleeves I just left them off but you have an armhole that you like that's sleeveless so you're gonna put that armhole on here I'll show you how to do that size of armhole this is my liking you all have your own armhole that you like did you raise the armhole I raised the armhole because it went down a size and when you go down a size the armhole was naturally raised that was enough for me I didn't have to raise it additionally okay how did you finish the necklines and armholes I surged the edge tucked under and top stitched very very quick and easy you could also use the fold over elastic again the blouse was done in no time and, and really truly what I want you to understand is take two pieces of that classic blouse pattern and make this so here's a few things that you can that's why I say you can use this for a muslin when lengthening the blouse do I just add to the bottom if you want the blouse to be longer yes just add to the bottom all right are we okay there a yard oh, I'm sorry how much yardage for the knit one yard you only need a front and a back and this particular fabric um, this is again that ocean blue ITY neat I think it's like 65 66 inches wide it's really wide so one yard is enough to make this great little top and it's just adorable I mean it's really cute it's great to be worn under sweater all kinds of stuff okay do you have templates for all armholes no you all do you guys are gonna make your templates okay I can't tell you what size armhole you like just like I can't tell you what size you like in your blouse there's no rules on armholes those are what I like and all I have to do is take my French curve and lay it down on my sleeveless my armholes and write it down and make little notes okay how can we use knit to correct fit of a woven ah good question that's what I was getting to how can you use knit to f to correct the fit of a woven that's the million dollar question that I appreciate you answering because that's where I'm trying to lead you down the path okay remember L C and D please we have to stick to L C D I noticed in workshops it's really hard for you to stick to LCD even though I've said it I have said it for 19 years I've said it it's still really hard for you all to actually do it L is length and L is no different in a woven than it is in a knit C is circumference C is smaller in a knit than it is in a woven but D is depth and depth is no difference in a knit or a woven so when I said I went down a size because it was a knit that's all I had to do those are the only changes I made because that was circumference everything else stayed the same and I didn't have to worry about any of my angle of the sleeve bust start all of that was exactly the same all I had to do was change my circumference so when you talk about knits and wovens let's not talk about them generically as much as we want to talk about them in terms of L C and D the only thing that changes with knits to woven is the C alright so that's really important that we keep that in our heads at all times Peggy that looks big what size did you make it looks big on this little mannequin but it's not it's not at all and if I wasn't dressed I'd take it off and put it on but I'm dressed why do the armholes look so deep because the mannequins not true to size this is a little bitty person okay and the armholes aren't deep um, just as a reference I'll measure them so that we can kind of have a number that we use so that you all can have a number that you use these armholes go from 10 to 20 there it's a 20 inch armhole a 20 inch armhole so for me it's perfect I could go smaller I could go 18 but this is fine remember I did not want this tight on my body I wanted it I shouldn't say tight I wanted it tight but I didn't want to go negative ease not in this particular case because typically what I wanted is negative ease is used for knits in general this pattern has such beautiful shaping to it 
I wanted to let the darts do the shaping and not have it cling to my body. That's a huge advantage of this pattern is it already has such beautiful shaping to it. So even though I changed to a knit, I, I don't necessarily want to rely on the negative ease. I wanted to use the shaping that's already in the pattern. So that's why it's a knit and I stitch the vertical darts front and back. Okay, don't kind of get distorted the fact that it's on the mannequin because the mannequin is just like a fake little size. You know, she doesn't even have a back. So I just wanted you to see it on a body of some kind. Okay, so number one, what I recommend you to do is take the front and the back. It could be woven, you guys, I don't care. The only reason I did it knit is because I didn't want you to have to do buttons, buttonholes, front facings. I wanted to eliminate all that. I wanted to simplify it as much as possible. So I put the center front on the fold, center back on the fold. I can slip that over my head and be done with it. Okay? Okay. Please explain two-way stretch knits. It just stretches in both directions. There's lots of controversy, you guys, because people have named them four-way. There's no such thing as four-way. There's only one way and that stretches around and two way stretches around and down up. So just call it four way it, anyway, just one way or two way. And you can call it two way and four way, it doesn't matter as long as everybody knows we're talking about the same thing. Alright? How can I correct knit pants hugging full butt till it is like two round buns, yet with some wrinkles and bags on top of inseam? Um, one is you can differentiate between circumference, one is circumference, and one is length. Two different areas. So something can be really, really tight, but the length or the depth can be off. That's why it's really important as you go back that you understand length, circumference, and depth. Tomorrow, tomorrow we are um, doing a little Puyallup special, or anyway, the class we're talking about is fitting yourself by yourself. We have a DVD on fitting yourself by yourself. If you do not understand L, C, and D, that DVD is critical for you to get, watch, and understand. L, C, D is, you'll never get fit if you don't understand L, C, and D. But I mean, we talk about it a lot, so be sure you know that. Okay, so what I wanted you to do is be able to start with two pieces and make something out of those two pieces and keep it simple. When you go and do those two pieces, okay, the first thing you'll watch for is, is the bust in the right place? Does it need to go up or down? On the pattern, there is a line that's above the bust point. If you're looking at your pattern, that's a lengthen or shorten line. And if the bust dart needs to go down, I can just cut it and move it down. It won't need to come up trust me, but if it needs to go down, I can cut it at the same amount all the way across and move it down and then take that amount off the bottom so that my side seams match. Alright? Okay. What pattern top are you wearing? The gray print top. This is um, pattern 65, Mary's top, Mary's wrap, the new one. The one we just released with PBS and the fabric is on the site. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, sorry. Is the shoulder angle considered length or depth? The shoulder angle is depth, the shoulder angle is a dart. You guys listen. I want you to hold off on your questions just because I want to get through this and I think it'll answer a lot of your questions. So just let's hang on for a little bit and let me get through the L, the C, and D when you're fitting your muslin. I'm going to use this as a muslin and I'm going to answer these questions. But I need you all to hear this and to listen rather than be thinking of the question you're going to ask and then we'll ask your questions. We'll answer your questions here in a minute. Okay? Okay. We're talking about blouses. We're talking about making the muslin and the first thing is length. There's two lengths that I'm going to deal with. One is base the neck to bust and bust to waist on this blouse. The very first thing when I put the blouse on, I don't care if it's knit or woven, if this bust dart is too high, it's going to have to go down. So make a cut all the way across the pattern, lower it down. Don't play with the dart, don't move the dart, just add to the tissue and move it down. Then turn it to the back. That's where I'm going to see a sway back. Generally, if it's just darts I need to take in, I can fix those and I can make the waist. 
But if I have a sway back, that's going to show itself. That is not a length issue, but it's going to show it when I turn to the back. And you might as well fix it now. And I'm going to fix that by taking a, dart, a horizontal dart above the waist and tapering it to nothing. The sway back will be anything that shows itself when I turn around to the back. The only thing that shows itself at the waist will be a sway back. So even if you don't know what a sway back looks like, above the waist, make a horizontal dart, taper it to nothing at the sides, and take the blouse off, do it, do it like a half inch, and put the blouse back on. And if it looks better, leave it. If it looks worse, take it away. Okay, that's the easiest way to do this on yourself, and you guys can do this. Okay, that's lengths. Those are the only two lengths you have to deal with. If you want to make the blouse longer, you'll simply add length to the bottom. All right, circumference. If you are too small or too large, go to another size, make up another muslin. Don't, don't try to just make the size bigger. The sizes we offer are so right on that I'm going to tell you, just make up the next size. It won't be too wide in the shoulders. I promise the grading is very good on this. Remember, we sold 10 million of these blouses, okay? I didn't just make up this pattern. It fits very well. So go to the size that's appropriate for you. If you are larger at the bottom than you are at the top, pick it for the top. You don't pick a, pat you don't pick a blouse pattern for the hip. Pick it for the top, and then you can just draw out to another size, to the hip size that you need to be. On the website, we have directions for making the muslin. If you add seam allowance to the side seam, you will have enough because we say to add an inch all the way down the sides. That'll give you four extra inches at the bottom than you need at the top. For most of you, that's enough. Okay? Okay. That's length. That's circumference. And we're going to go to depth. There's two items of, well, there'll be three. There'll be four. Four items of depth when it comes to the shoulder. What I've noticed when women are draping or trying to fit, they go to the problem first. Go in the order of L, C, and D. We've talked about this before, but I'm going to remind you. Start at the top and go down. The first item of depth is the shoulder seam. If you have any gapping at the armhole that's coming from the shoulder seam because the shoulder seam is not right, you're going to pick it up. That will take away that gapping is to pick it up here. Pick it up here at the edge of the shoulder, taper to nothing at the neck edge. Everybody has a different shoulder angle. There's no way as a pattern company, as a pattern maker, that I can know everyone's shoulder angle. I need you to know this information so that you can fix your blouse. And it's no different whether it's a knit or a woven. So fix it here, taper to nothing, and clean this up all the way until there's no gapping here. Sometimes there will be just a little bit of gapping. Watch the back. Make sure there's no diagonal lines. All those lines are going to tell you that the shoulder angle is wrong. Got that. Once I pick the shoulder angle up, I've made the armhole smaller. All I'm going to do is start the, the, new, the same size armhole. I'm not changing the sleeve. I'm going to start the same size armhole, start it there, and I'm just going to move it down so that it's the same armhole, it's just lower. All right? The next part or the next uh, angle depth issue will be the bust start. If I pick up the shoulder as far as I can, and I still have a gap at the armhole, I want to make the dart larger. Undo the side seam and make the dart larger. And these two items will take care of this gapping at the armhole. All my gaps are going to weigh. If I measure this length of the body, base of the neck over the bust to the waist, and if I call that A, and if I measure from the side seam to the waist and I call that B, on women, which is longer, A or B, we know A is longer. Why is it longer? Because I got a bump in the middle and the shoulder seam is angled. So how do I get the fabric to go over this A and be shortened for B is I use darts and darts are angles so I can take away fabric here and leave it in the middle. So my points of taking fabric away are at the shoulder seam and at the bust. Those are the two places I can take away. The rest will hang straight. Okay, that horizontal bust dart make it bigger. It does not change circumference. It's horizontal. It will not change circumference. I simply taper it to nothing. It's perfect. 
on the back, the two issues of depth that I have, I'll have the sway back. I've already fixed that. And sometimes because this has a collar, I'll have to slash the shoulder blades and pull the collar up. If my back length is too long, and you'll see because the collar, the neckline, especially once I put the collar on, the collar will stick straight up. That's telling me that the length of the back is too short. So I'll slash to nothing at the, at the armhole. I'll add it center back. Usually it's like an inch, a half inch. No more than an inch and a quarter. Anything more than that is too much. And sometimes I can have all of these. I can have a rounded back. I can have a sway back. I can have an all on one body. But keep in mind that once you change them, especially on a classic blouse like this, I can keep using that base over and over and over. So once I've done the base and I've done my darts, that's it. I've covered what the concept known is, is fit. I've completely covered fit. L, C, D. Okay, now go with your questions, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to pause for a minute so that you guys can all get your questions. Are they chattering a lot? Okay. Okay, that's okay. All right, so I know that's absorbing in your head, and the goal is to hear it over and over and over because it's not hard. The number one thing that happens is it's the information that's in there already, which is wrong, is kind of blocking new information from going in. So I don't know how you just kind of blip your head and get rid of the old information, but try to. If I increase, okay, now we're going to answer questions, you guys, so feel free. Let's cover everything I just went over and let's ask the questions that apply to that. If I increase the bust dart, then I need to add the increased amount of the dart to the bottom, correct? Yes. If I increase the bust dart, we'll say by an inch, then my side seams won't match. So if I go to the bottom and add that inch back in, I'll be good to go. If I increase the bust dart by a half inch, which is an inch at half inch at the top and a half inch at the bottom, that's total an inch, and I add to the bottom. Absolutely. That still changes the angle and will take away the extra fabric. How do you lower the dart? On your front only. I am confused by your previous explanation. On our pattern, we have what we call a lengthen or shorten line. Well, I don't have it on mine because it's the one I did. But right, right, I'll show you where it would be. Right underneath the armhole and above the bust point, there's a, an area in there. It's called the free zone on a pattern. And I can cut right through there and, and add, like, it's, this is a length issue. So anytime it's a length issue, I have to add the same amount all the way across. So let's say I want to take that bust dart down by one inch. So I'm going to cut here. I'm going to add the inch. And the reason I do it that way is because it keeps the dart end all right and it keeps it folded right. And, you know, you don't have to redraw the dart end. I cut it and I lower the bust dart. If I want to, I've just made my blouse longer than one inch and my side seams don't match. So I have a couple options. I can just then take it off the bottom of the blouse and my side seams will now match. Or if I want the blouse to be longer, I can go in and add an inch to the back. And I can add it at the bottom and then my side seams will match. Those are my two options. But on your pattern, that line is marked. Okay? Okay. If, if I increase the bust dart, am I shortening my side seam? You are shortening your side seam, therefore that's why you would add to the bottom. You would add it back to the bottom and redraw the bottom. Add the length to the bottom that you just took away. Hold on just a second. We're just having a few little computer issues. All right. I'm confused. When I adjust the shoulder seam, I have issues when I'm trying to seam the sleeve to the body as I have adjusted the shoulder seam. Let me show you this. Um, let's say this is my armhole and if I've taken the shoulder seam and let I'm gonna fold this down so you can see it 
And you can see that when I've done that, I've made this armhole smaller. If I have a template of this armhole, then I can come in and put the template right here, and you can see now that my armhole goes lower. So all I do now is draw the same armhole right back onto the pattern, but I start at a lower point and I redraw. It moves the whole armhole down the same amount that I obviously took away from the shoulder seam. Okay? If I want to add a pleat to the center back to allow more room to reach and lift at school, is it one inch or two, usually to end up with a box pleat? There's no usual on that, you guys. It's styling. Um, email me privately on that, just because, I mean, that's all styling. It's just a styling question. Whether you make it one inch or two, it's completely up to you. And, you know, lots of variables as to how to add it or, or where you want to add it. Okay. What about the waist? Do I need to change the waist when I'm checking length? The waist in this garment is created by the darts. So when I first make the muslin, don't sew in the vertical darts. And then when I put it on, I can drape those vertical darts literally right on me. So there's really, when I have vertical darts in a pattern, there's really no need to put those vertical darts in the muslin. You can mark where they are so that you know how far from center front and center back they are, but there's no need to physically sew them because I don't know if the circumference of the blouse is right. So if I just mark where they should go, then I can just drape them in front, drape them in back, take them off, sew them, and then put them back on once I know center front is closed up. Okay? Did you say that if I take up at the shoulder seam, then do I lower the armhole? I did say that, yes. You restore the armhole back to what it was before. When you changed the shoulder seam, there was nothing wrong with the armhole. The shoulder seam was just, you know, at a different angle, at the wrong angle. There is no gapping at armholes, but it's too low till bra is showing. How can I correct that? If you're doing a sleeveless garment, then you should correct it. You shouldn't correct it if you're putting a sleeve in because sometimes when you are putting a sleeve in and the, the garment is sleeveless, it will show your bra, but you still need that size armhole. If you are doing a sleeveless and this is your pattern and this is your sleeveless armhole, you would line the shoulder seam up and you can see where the sleeveless armhole is higher. So I would align these two together and then I would draw up the side of the garment and draw on my sleeveless armhole. That's the reason you have templates, ladies, is so that you can do everything you want to that pattern to make it what you want it to be. It's kind of like Mr. Potato Head. You pick the body you want, you pick the neckline you want, you pick the sleeves you want, and you put it together. Okay, Knowing that you have the shoulder angle built in, that's all in your basic. So that's why I want to make sure that this basic has all those ingredients built into it. To size the pattern down, would I follow the same procedure as recommended for the yoga pants? Yes. Yes. When I adjust the shoulder seam, I have issues when I'm trying to seam the sleeve to the body. I have issues. You got to tell me your issues and Dr. Peggy will help you. I don't know. Uh, you know, if you, again, if you restore the armhole back to what it was, then your issues will all go bye-bye. Can you add circumference to a sleeve without changing the armhole? No. No, what you want to do if you want a bigger sleeve, in this pattern there's eight sizes. So you go and pick the bigger size sleeve you need, and then you take the armhole that goes with it and you draw that armhole onto the body that you need. Lots of us need, you know, we have a big bust and little armholes, or we have a little bust and big arms. You know, you can, Mr. Potato Head, you can take a smaller sleeve and draw the smaller armhole by by lining up the sh by lining it up here and just by extending the side seam up you can make that armhole smaller I'm going to show it to you because I did it on this top I mean I made I made some different variations of 600 that I want to show you and I did it on there and I'm going to show you how we did it okay how you mix and match armholes 
if I increase the bust art and I have to add to the bottom, do I add all the way to center front or do I taper to center front? You taper to nothing at center front. Okay? So a dart is a length issue, not a depth issue. Trying to wrap my brain around depth. No. That your brain's not wrapped around that just yet. Let me clarify, okay? Length is any time I add the same amount all the way across. So if I'm moving a dart up or down, that's length. Once I take the dart, a dart is an angle. That's depth. It's an irregular length is depth. An irregular circumference is depth. But any time I have to do an angle, the shoulder seam, the bust dart, a sway back, uh, you know, all of those things, those are angles, that's depth. Depth, depth is darting. If, a dart, if a dart can fix my problem, it's a depth issue period. Okay? And you know, look, the only reason you can't wrap your head around it is because you haven't heard it enough. You just have to hear it over and over and over. Okay? And you'll get it. It is not, it's not difficult. It's just new to be heard. Okay. So what I want to do now is I think you've got everything that you need to get that muslin draped. So we're going to drape it and then we're going to make the blouse. And then I want to offer you some options when we make the blouse because once I get this, it's awesome. You're going to love it. Your shoulders are not going to be too wide. Your sleeves are going to fit. All of those wonderful things, you guys. And, you know, I had a lady in a class in Phoenix, Kathy. Kathy said, I can't believe your patterns fit. Well, <laughs> you know, I did not start a pattern company just because I wanted to. I started a pattern company because... The patterns that were out there were truly, truly, truly not what I thought were well-drafted patterns, and it hasn't changed in the 20, almost 20 years I've been doing this. They are still poorly drafted, and I'm going to tell you, if you have lots of frustrations about fit, at least start with a decent pattern. This is the POM. It's 10 bucks. Start with a decent pattern. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, I, like I said, I want to change up styling. We're okay question-wise? This pattern is, I'm going to make a maternity shirt for my daughter when I get the 600. Should I adjust, add to the side seams as if drawing an A? No. No. You want to slash up through the body and through the center up to either the armholes or the shoulder seams and add through the center. It's, it, if you add too much to the side seam, the side seams become too bias, and bias is instability. So you want to add internally so that nothing gets too crazy. And again, it depends on how much you're going to add, but add equally all the way around so it gives her the fullness that she needs. Measure how big she needs it to be. Maternity is added within, not just at the sides. Okay, so now what I want to do is talk about the uses of this blouse. It's often for a fabric that has a lot of texture to it because it's a simple pattern. So it's a beautiful way to show off gorgeous fabric. That's one. I showed you either a border print. You know, what's popular right now, and you're seeing a lot of them, um, this particular fabric I wanted to show you. This, this is on the site. I don't know the number of this one, but um, how you can see how it's it's a gradation all the way through the fabric. This is gorgeous for like a blouse. This is the fabric I'm going to use in two weeks to make the blouse. Um, but anything will just make a gorgeous blouse. And for a lot of you, you're nervous about border prints, but this is a great time to use a border print. And just line, because you've only got two pieces, just line up the front and back with the border and then choose something wonderful to make the collar out of. It could be a different fabric even. It could be a solid. And even the tabs could be solid. This blouse is, is really the foundation of so many garments out there that I really want you to have fun and get this down. This is a, um, a classic white blouse is the thing to do with this, with this pattern. White blouses have been around in fashion now for the last few years. They're still strong. A white blouse doesn't last much more than a season, so it's a perfect time to make a beautiful white blouse. And this is the time to do it. Because on jackets, especially with v-necks, and they come outside the jacket, it's a great look. 
I had a question the other day and, and a lady asked me to show off this fabric because she couldn't really see it on the website. I decided not to just show it off. I decided to actually make a garment out of it. This fabric, I'm going to spend just a minute on it. It's stunning. With the classic blouse, it's absolutely beautiful. This fabric is called The Eyes Have It. It's fabric number 798. Um, it's actually not a black. It's a charcoal gray. I'll come back to that in just a minute. But when you cut the fabric, it has these little holes all through it. And at the bottom of every row, there's like, I don't know, little eyelashes. I don't know really how to describe that. I mean, this fabric is beyond beautiful. So there's like these little eyelashes as you cut in the row. So what I did is when I placed the pattern, I placed the jacket at the bottom of those eyelashes. This is pattern number 1850. Beautiful, perfect fabric pattern combination because it's a very simple kimono and it would do just a beautiful job. So this is actually the selvage. I cut the selvage off the edges and then sewed it actually right back on to create that look. I shortened the jacket by about eight inches. I just wanted a little short look. And because there's eyelashes all through here, I wove a little leather strip. Any kind of ribbon, you could do anything through the waist to ease it or, or gather it in a little bit. So, I mean, just the fabric is being utilized every little bit because all through here there's holes. So I could have woven anything through those, all these little holes here, and all along those rows, there's little tiny holes all the way through it. Again, at the armhole, I put the trim, the selvage. This is all the selvage. I only use two yards. So two yards is enough trim to go all the way around, all the way down the front. I just think this is a spectacular fabric. And absolutely, the website doesn't show it off. When she said to me, could you please tell us a little bit about this fabric? I said, absolutely. And I decided to make a jacket out of it. Two yards. You'll need two yards of, of fabric. I didn't um, put right sides together. I did, I surged one edge and I did like a flat fill seam anytime I overlapped the front to the side and then the same with the side seams. I did like a flat fill. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. But it really just looks great, especially with that collar coming out over the top. So beautifully done, just really gorgeous fabric. All right, then what I wanted to show you was some other variations. This is just a solid make it long. With leggings right now, this long blouse is so in style. It's just all over the place. And when I add length, all I have to do is add length to the bottom. And I've added as much as 10 inches. It goes, usually will take it about to your knees. But even to make it as long to the knees is worthwhile. I had done this a little while ago and I wanted to remind you of it because I had seen this in Nordstrom's. So I've worn this on PBS. If you look, um, it's sewn only to the waist and then these front ties are just left untied. So you can see it's just the classic blouse, no buttons, no buttonholes, no nothing. You're going to stop sewing right above the waist and then you literally can take and tie this in the front. It's a great look and then of course it's sleeveless, no sleeves. So in this particular case, you're only using the front, the back, the front facing, and the collar. You're only using four pieces. And then the back, you can see it has really nice coverage. It's beautiful. This is just a really simple, gorgeous, lightweight silk. We have a lot of stunning silks on the website. This was one that I had used. Okay, so then I wanted to take your attention over to this because I did a few different things with this. And this was a, a garment that I had seen at Neiman's and I just fell in love with it. So this is all one piece and it's the classic blouse, but I made a few changes to it. I'm going to go through those changes. So keep in mind that I try to have different projects for different levels. So this is everybody who's not sewn it. It's your first level, front and back, center front fold, center back fold. Bam, everybody can do that. Once you have a little bit of fun and a little bit of confidence, I can move up and I can start cutting and doing things like this with it. So what this is, is this is the Floral Beauty. It's fabric number 666. And it's the stock up on black ITY knit. And it's fabric number 8, 
23. We'll have those links on the site after this is done. I used the front and the back. I want to get rid of this because I want to show you how I did it. So the first thing I did is this has, if you notice, this is the classic blouse, but it has a knit sleeve. So I used the knit sleeve and I used the knit armhole. The first thing I did is I lengthened it 10 inches, left the collar how it was. There's only five pieces. There's the bodice back, bodice front, front facing, sleeve, and collar. So there's only five pieces. The collar you leave exactly as it is. The front facing I added my 10 inches. So those two pieces were done. The sleeve, bodice back, bodice front, front facing, collar, and sleeve. Five pieces. Yeah, that's right. The sleeve, I used my knit sleeve. So I, I didn't make any changes to the knit sleeve, but I did on the blouse itself, I went down one size, or you could go half a size, it doesn't mean automatic, but then what I did is I took my, and you can see here, where I took my knit armhole and I put it on my blouse. So I lined this up, oops, sorry. Here, let me get the right pieces. I get, need to have the right pieces. Here we go. The blouse I sew in two weeks is going to be this fabric right here. It's not a sheer, but it's a kind of a sheer. This is a... No sheer? Not sheer? No, it's not a sheer. It's lightweight, but it's not a sheer. But you don't do anything different with a sheer. All right, so here's my blouse that I'm making, and here's the armhole of my knit armhole. So I line up the shoulder seam, and you can see where I drew that on. It was a little bit higher, and it was a little bit narrower, so I drew my knit armhole onto my blouse. All right, so this, this whole, this is my classic blouse. I lengthened the whole thing 10 inches. Then what I did is I cut it in two pieces. This is going to go like that. And then I added a pocket. I'm going to show you how to add a pocket in, in a minute. Here's the pocket. This all goes like this. And then that goes like that. That's the front. So I still did the bust start. I still did the waist start. To the back, all I did was add 10 inches so the back stays like it is. Very easy to do. Okay, then this is my pocket. And this is a great look again, you guys, with, with leggings. I can use, it takes like a yard of this fabric and a yard of this fabric, so if I've got yard remnants hanging around and I like the fabric, I can, it's really fun to mix or match. Just keep in mind that it's, it's the black sleeve that matches the bottom. So I've got to have, you know, make sure you have, I mean, you don't want to do, the sleeve and the stretch woven, it, it wouldn't look as good as the lightweight ITY knit. Okay, so I'm going to do a pocket, and when you do a pocket, I'm going to use three pieces. So what I did is I did two blue and a white in the middle, because this is going to be my skirt, or you know, the bottom of my shirt now is what this is, and then I'm going to put two pieces behind it. So on the two pieces behind it, I'm going to cut a pocket. So if you notice, I'm just going to cut here. And so now what I have is my shirt, and I have the white, and I have the blue, and the white and the blue are cut the same. This edge follows all three layers the same, and this edge follows all three layers the same. Got that? Okay. So now I put down this. This is my pocket. It's finished. And with this one, I'm going to take my French curve and actually make a pocket. So that's it. I add seam allowance to both of these. This will be my pocket facing. I sew them right sides together. And this gets turned inside. And then this comes up behind. And that makes what I have here. So once I cut the bottom of the blouse off, a pocket gets put in, and that's what creates this cool little pocket right here. So this is all one. Even though I have the belt on there, I could just wear it as one, and it's adorable. 
I mean, it's really fun. I just added a little bit of belt just to make it fun. But it's buttons down the front. This is all darted and fitted. It's just a cute on, and it's a great style right now. Okay, this is this is the pocket piece. Oh, I see what you're saying here. Yeah, there's a little pocket right there. So y'all love pockets. This is a great way to take your classic shirt, make it long, but put pockets in it. I just love the look. I know you'll love it, you guys. It's just a really cute thing to do. Using, I could use the same fabric, but I loved how they used different fabrics and how the sleeve matched the bottom. And then you could do it with like jean leggings or you know whatever color coordinated it with. All right. And I know it's going to take a few minutes. Will you think about doing a knit pattern for men? Would love to have a collared shirt to make for my hubby. Kind of Henley with a collar, pretty please. I will think about it, yes. Just don't hold your breath, okay? <laughs> All right, but I love the request, you guys, so thank you. Um, I do want to tell you that right now, all of the blouse construction methods are on tips and techniques, too. Um, the collar, this collar is awesome, the way it's sewn on, the front facing, everything's on tips and techniques, too. When you buy this, you get this. This is National Embroidery Month, February is, and this has the pattern to go onto the collar. So you can embroider a collar on there, and it's actually sized to fit the different color collars on there. So anyway, buy this to get that free. I thought that was a great deal. The jacket, the gray that I used was 1850, shortened. And then the POM is 600. Okay, so after that, any questions? What fabric is the blouse body that you are showing with the pocket? What fabric is the blouse body? This blouse body is Floral Beauty. It's fabric number 666. And this is fabric Stock Up on Black. It's the ITY Knit. I said Stock Up on Black because it's such a beautiful black. It's great drape. It's just perfect. <laughs> and it's fabric number 823. Which fabric is on the back? I did the uh, whole back is floral. I did the whole back one piece. You could have cut it. I just thought it looked better when it was one. And actually the fabric I was copying the whole, I mean the garment I was copying the whole back was the same. So I kept it the same. Does it have to be a stretch woven on top? It doesn't have to. It's just you've got to find some way to blend um, it into the bottom, or you could make the whole thing woven. It does not have to be knit at all. No. I just like the combination of the knit sleeve. I wanted a knit sleeve into the woven body. That's what I was looking for, is to use the classic blouse, but to use a knit armhole and knit sleeve in the classic blouse. That's really the lesson that I'm trying to teach here. Okay? because it's a great combination to not always use that same sleeve. And earlier somebody had asked me about the sleeve and how it fastens on the classic blouse. This is how it does. It has a lap over. It's a wide hem. And all you do is turn it over and then put a button on it. So it makes like almost a little pleated sleeve. It's really beautiful. You can make the, you can make the fold up wider if you decide you want to almost like make a little cuff and top stitch, but you're going to just fold that over, sew on the button, and call it good. And it makes like this beautiful pleated sleeve. Okay? Um, I have tips and techniques. Is there an updated version? This is tips and techniques 2. It's never been updated because the, the information's timeless. I'm not. I, I look much younger, but the information itself is the same. We're still doing the blouse, everything the exact same way. Two weeks from now I'm going to make the blouse. I'm using the exact methods that are on here. Okay? There's much more on here than just the blouse. There's the fly front. There's all kinds of stuff on here. What is the fabric number for the border print for your shirt project in two weeks? I don't know. I don't know. Is the ITY black good for yoga pants? Yes. It's a little bit lighter than Pontaroma, but very thin, very drapey, beautiful. Yes, it is. ITY knits are great for making both pieces. 
So that's why they're so good, because like they make them for jumpsuits to make you look super skinny, do the top and bottom the same. I don't know the number of that fabric, you guys. I was doing really good. I wrote all my fabrics down, but I don't remember that number. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to say goodnight. We're going to see you in two weeks. Get your blouses made. Send me pictures. Let me see. If you have any problems, just take a picture of the problem. Don't tell me what the problem is, because I'm telling you guys, that's, that's seemingly not working. But just <laughs> take a picture of what you're trying to fix. Send it to me, and we'll fix it. It's very easy. There's not that many options, but do your homework first. Try to fix it, because otherwise when I give you the answer, you don't know what I'm saying. So listen to this, try to fix it, and then we guys, we want to all make blouses, okay? We want to make great blouses that work, that are beautiful. And we'll see you in two weeks. All right. Oh, that is it. The fab What's the name of that fabric? To the square, woven cotton, almost sheer. And what fabric number is it? 667 is the fabric number. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Good night.